Final mystery events in Westbound Journey have been released, and as anticipated, two of the three are tied to Ermadon's release. So you have here his milestone bonuses for his unlock, and also his unlock wheel here. Now he was being anticipated very heavily. We knew going in that he would be a weakness synergy commander, because he's been listed here in the weakness lineup under commander rankings for quite a while now. Going in though, we knew that he'd be a new premium commander, so he'd be very expensive to unlock at that pay bracket. But he had so many strong alternative commanders competing for this spot in the synergy already. So he'd effectively have to be so good that he would probably have to be an, be an auto buy for top players to unseat one of these existing strong picks. Otherwise, no one was going to invest in him, obviously. So Jamie and at least one healer are necessary for the weakness synergy. You can also run tri triple weakness. And then that's taking up four of your five commander slots already. But then even in the maxed out weakness synergy lineups, you have Jamie Drake. Dana is incredible. Night King, weakness is his best synergy. Then you have Baelish potentially. You have Daenerys with her four-star weapon, which I think currently, in my opinion, is in that maxed out weakness lineup. So even before his release, you had Jamie Drake. And I think currently the best maxed out weakness lineup is that Meridianos lineup with four-star Daenerys weapon, Dana with her four-star weapon, and then Night King. So even in that situation, Baelish doesn't make the cut. So you already have in that situation, the older F5 being power creeped and not being used. So I assume that would be the case with Amadon's release too, where he'd be better than the, the previous commanders. And I guess the question of this video will be, is he? And is he worth the investment? Because of course, if you're going to be unlocking him, particularly now, he is going to be very, very expensive if you unlock him through this will. So I have her all the details you could want about him and his awakening. We also have a comparison down here at the bottom to compare him to similar place commanders and other synergies to sort of put into context where he's at. So as far as his stats go, they are not power creeped at all. He actually has the exact same total attack, health, and defense as the likes of Baelish even, Daenerys, Cersei, John. So there's no improvement there. His tavern stats are very, very good. He has 5-star combat rate and 4-star leadership at base. Those will be increased by 1-star when he's at 2-star awakening as well. So he's quite a good pick for getting to low rarities for tavern stats only there. But of course, if he's going to be good, that is going to entirely come from how effective is his 4-star ability here and how much is his awakening going to provide and also provide compared to his alternatives. So as it says here, at the start of battle, allied lineups at the front gain a special effect each time allied lineups at the front trigger 20 cumulative weakness attacks. So the key note here in this first half is all of his synergy here only procs off the front row. That means he only works for single line weakness. If you run triple weakness, your second and third lines will contribute nothing to this 20 weakness attack, so you can't manipulate the triggers here and get more value out of him. You're just going to be totally limited in terms of how much value you can actually get. Amadon attacks two random enemy targets once, prioritizes attacking front row targets with a damage coefficient of 80%, also increases damage taken by target lineup from weakness attacks by 5%. So as far as I can tell, this damage taken debuff that you're applying on enemy lineups will proc directly off these two random attacks. The issue with that is that weakness attacks themselves are not random. They are very specific in how they target enemies, so they will always target the enemy lineup, which has the fewest troops remaining. Amadon's attacks, however, and therefore his debuff that he applies, will target random enemy targets. So that in itself is weirdly anti-synergistic with, with weakness itself, because 
your five lineups could potentially be hitting A1, and then Amadon could attack and debuff A2 and A3, and then you'd effectively be getting no value whatsoever out of his debuffer. So that's a negative immediately, in my opinion. This 5% increase is stated as a flat damage increase, similar to something like Julian, rather than just an increase in the actual weakness modifier itself. That's the case, that is very good, because that's obviously going to be multiplying up high weakness stacks even further, and that if you can get that on the lineups you're hitting, you will actually get very good value out of that. My biggest issue with him, however, is just the amount of damage he deals. So it hits two random enemy targets every time it triggers for 80% damage coefficient. That puts it uh, every time it triggers for a total of 160% damage coefficient, and it reads as if it only hits one lineup. If that hit all lineups or something, this would be very different, but it seems to only hit one lineup. Potentially, if there's been a translation error here, and it does hit all lineups, everything I say in this video will totally flip on its head, and my opinion on him will totally flip on its head. But as far as I can tell, it only hits one lineup, or hits one lineup for 80 and another lineup for 80. And as I said, you can only proc it through your front line of weakness. You can't triple the amount of triggers you get through running three lines of weakness, or even double it with two lines. And going off that, I have here a chart of approximately what you should expect in terms of damage output from him. So this goes off the total amount of weakness attacks from one healer without their weapon. So if you have your healer with weapon, if you have Hector, if you have potentially Arslan healing into this dead zone, maybe Dragon Assist, there are ways to get slightly more weakness attacks, but because it only procs off the front row, you could maybe get one more trigger out of Amadon, but, but no more for sure. Across the course of the fight here with these numbers, you will get a total of five procs in total for an overall number of 960% damage coefficient. So that is the equivalent of 9.6 normal attacks, or somewhere in the region of three active skills from commanders with full buffs. For an F5 commander, with such strong competition for his spot as well, I think that is too low in terms of numbers, particularly when you consider the facts of how it triggers of weakness attacks only. That means all the damage is backloaded into the second half of the fight. So you see here in the first half of the fight, he does absolutely nothing. The problem with this is by the time you get to the second half of the fight, like if it's a competitive fight, half of your troops could already be dead by this point. If you're playing into, say, a maxed out female build, you could be nuked by Salma multi-proccing off Layla with other F5 commanders here. You could have the same here. And through both of these damage spikes against you, you're doing nothing and you're just taking all the damage. So by the time you get to this point where he actually starts proccing, the actual damage that he's pulling this damage coefficient from will just innately be lower anyway. And I have a comparison here at the bottom to put this into context. So on the left here is Amadon's skill, and on the right is Dayron's. So per trigger, Amadon's caps out at 160%. Dayron, however, he hits, as it says here, all enemies, so that's all lineups. What this means is that Amadon, for example, will hit A1 and A2. Dayron can hit a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He hits everything, and those lines behind the front line will also have lower defense and health stats, typically. So you'll do increased damage to them, even if the coefficient is the same. And even in the context of just hitting their front row, he'll deal a thousand percent total scaling off one trigger if he hits into a fully bled front row, which you can quite easily get in the first half of the fight with John. So that's basically the worst case scenario with Dayron, and that's dealing a thousand percent scaling. That's already more than Amadon across an entire fight here, and it will practically be even more because 
you're getting these first procs much earlier whilst you have a lot more troops alive compared to Amadon procking later and later. And you can really see how the top end Aeron's damage just absolutely dwarfs Amadon's. So on this middle column, it's going off Sonara with no weapon here. And on the right hand side is with Sonara with four star weapon. So there is some variance there in terms of how many Daron procs you can actually get. In practice, the amount of damage you'll get on average will probably be between these numbers. The lowest number is basically impossible to achieve because it implies you don't hit into bleeds ever, which won't happen. But it's how I thought it should be listed, just given how many variables there are with, with Daron and how much damage you can actually go to. You can really see there, just as a comparison, just how little damage this is actually contributing for this expensive a commander. And because of this, because of the awkwardness of this random targeting effect as well, I honestly don't think he's that good. Maybe when his weapon is released, this can change, because of course, currently you're comparing him to alternatives that do have their weapons released, like Dana and Daenerys weapons, particularly, are very, very strong. And potentially his weapon, if it tweaks his awakening effects a decent bit can definitely move in that direction as well maybe if there are translation errors and he performs differently in reports than his tooltip here suggests he can be better as well but in terms of advice at this point i i don't see why you would really spend on amadon over something like Aina. realistically i just think there are much much better options than him which is surprising to me because I really did think he'd, he'd come in with a really strong ability. But I, I don't think this is going to be game changing at all. His design in general just seems fairly counterintuitive to me. He triggers off cumulative weakness attacks, but then he only allows triggers from the front. So you can't manipulate that number at all and exaggerate it. He attacks random enemy targets and applies his debuff onto random targets, but then weakness attacks doesn't target enemies randomly. So both of his effects there just sort of work against itself, which I don't really get, but it's how it's been released. So as an overall piece of, of advice, I would, for most people at least, like unless you're a max account, just get him to gray, green, blue for tavern stats. If anything, obviously, if you're not in this pay bracket, just leave it completely and yeah, spend elsewhere. I think it is the core cool with Amadon.